starts with numbers. Eight times eight equals is 64. Divided by two is 32. Minus the square root of 49 is 25. I have been very passionate about tap dancing for many years, along with singing and playing the clarinet and band. I have also taken many, many math classes, as it is a requirement for our school. Raise your hand if you, and I presume that pretty much everyone here has taken some sort of math class. Now raise your hand if you have ever taken a tap class. All right, so not many. Now raise your hand if you play some sort of musical instrument or you sing. So there are definitely more musicians in the room. Tap dancing, mathematics, and music are so different in so many ways. Mathematics is done on a piece of paper and you use your hand to write down the answers. Well, tap is done with your feet. Well, music, you use your vocal cords or you use air or you use your hand to hold a bow or many other ways. Let's first uncover the similarities between tap dancing and math. First off, let's look at this equation. That is two paradiddles with a cramp roll. Now a paradiddle has four counts. There are two paradiddles, which means it has a total of eight counts, plus a cramp roll, which is four counts. That's a total of 12 counts. And let's say I want to put my two paradiddles in a four count, and then the cramp roll in another four count, in a total of an eight count in a music so or in a song. So that means that I'm going to have to subdivide. But we'll get to the music part of that later. First. What I'm going to have to do with my mathematics skills is I'm going to have to take, instead of one, two, three, four, I'm going to have to do a half, a half, which is one, a half, a half, which is one, a half, a half, which is one, and a half, a half, which is another one, which makes up one, two, three, four. Now, I would appreciate it if you all clapped along and said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, let me start that over. I'm sorry, that was a little complicated. Let's start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry, that was a, thank you so much for participating in that, uh, that adventure there. Um, anyway, anyway, that is just one similar, similarity between tap dancing and math. And does tap dancing, or does math make me better at tap dancing? It, it definitely does, but how? I'll explain that a little later in my TED Talk. Let's first look at the similarities between tap dancing and music. So in the combination I just presented, paradiddle, paradiddle, cramp roll, I had to subdivide to fit that into um, a count of eight. So let's first take quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And let's take those into eighth notes. So one, two, three, four quarter notes. Eighth notes. One. Two, back to quarter notes, 16th notes. And so I used my knowledge of subdivision to figure out this combination I want to fit into an eighth count. So my paradiddles, all the steps, the heel, toe, toe, heel, they were eighth notes. And then the cramp rolls, they were quarter notes. And so that is one way tap dancing and music are related. Another way, do any of you guys know Danny Daniels? Well, he is a very famous choreographer, and he won a Tony Award, which is pretty amazing. And if you don't know him, you should definitely go look him up. And he said something really interesting that supported, supports my idea. Some say you can't count in tap dancing, but anything that's done to any kind of rhythm can be counted. And every beat of a tap dance can be put into a musical phrase. It's all mathematics. Basically, with music, tap dancing is much easier because instead of slowing down your move, which is boring, or speeding up because you're nervous, a song keeps you very steady. 
so that the move is perfectly with the beats. Now let's move on to how music and math are related. Do any of you here know the Pythagorean theory? Well, it's not the Pythagorean theorem that we all know, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It is the theory by Pythagoras, who is a Greek philosopher and mathematician. He said, there's geometry in the humming of the string. Now, if you think about this, it's kind of confusing. You don't really understand what it means. But if you think about a violin versus a cello, a violin has a short, thin string. And a cello has a long, thick string compared to the violin. Now, which one do you think has the higher pitch? Yes, the violin. This is an A of a violin. And this is an A of a cello. And so basically, what he's trying to say is that whenever they create instruments, they have to use mathematics to make sure that the precise string is its way. Because if it's not as precise as it seems, or if it's not precise, then it'll be either higher or lower with the thickness and thinness of the string. Now, let's go to something that I do in my every single day life. I, use the, I play the clarinet every single day, just like I practice math, because I take it at school. Now, if you look at my clarinet, you can see that there are so many different sizes of holes in this clarinet. Let's say I switch this um, hole with this hole. Would it make the same sound? No, it would not, because it is precise mathematics to make these holes specifically the way they are. And so what I'm going to show you here is a demonstration. If I did not have the correct like, measurements of these holes, it would either be sharp or flat, what I'm playing right now. So I'll just do a little preview of my everyday life. Well, that's what happens when you don't let your read and you're talking for a while. Wow. So the final moment when I realized that math had a correlation with these other two ideas, specifically tap dancing in this situation, was when I was in my tap class and I was super confused about this situation. It's and I didn't understand the heel, adding the heel. It was so confusing because this is just a move we do in every single day, in our tap class every single day. But this time in our dance, we had to add a heel. And I was super confused. So I called my teacher over and I'm like, how do you do this? It's so confusing. She's like, oh, it's just, it's just math. And I was like, well, what does that exactly mean? She's like, well, it splits into eight notes. And I also knew what that meant because I do music every single day. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm a little confused. And she's like, well, just break it down with claps first. So. And I suddenly realized that I could break it down into that eight count of music. And it became so much easier after practicing it. So you're probably thinking right now, how can I relate to math, tap dancing, and music all combined? Well, mathematics practically surrounds our lives. Whether you're playing on a baseball field or you're decorating a room, there is some mathematics in all of that, geometry especially. Also, music surrounds your lives too, because you, when you walk into a store, you can sometimes hear music. When you watch a movie, you hear music. Tap dancing, on the other hand, you might not see every single day. But um, this is such an important, these three um, activities are so important to me, and it's so neat to see how that three completely different activities can be so similar in so many ways. And so basically, I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to think of three activities you do every single day in your life. And I want you to think of how all three of them together can relate and how mathematics can help you with those activities. Thank you.